My name is Mark Swift. I'm one of the producers on Captain Underpants. I became a fan of the books through reading it with my kids. And when we start making movies at DreamWorks, it's normally a very small team, a couple of artists, storyboard guy. And there was no producer involved at the time. I just started going to meetings. I would just show up at the Captain Underpants kind of when there was a meeting or a pitch and start offering some advice and giving some thoughts. And after a while, people just assumed I was the producer. I don't think anyone's ever asked me to be the producer on the film. It's just I kind of showed up, stuck around long enough that kind of became the producer without anyone ever kind of uh, informing. It was a real sneaky plan, and it worked. We used Dave Pilkey's books as an encyclopedia, not just one book, the series, like as, as we were making them, and would talk about the Pilkey spirit, the tone, you know, what was it in the books? And often we would find ourselves, when uh, struggling with an issue, actually going back to the books and seeing how Pilkey might solve it. So I think within the books there's a tone, there's an energy, there's a spirit that we wanted to make sure that we captured in the movie. What's uh, great for fans of the book is the books are extremely irreverent. They use different devices for their storytelling. And I think we've tried to replicate that in the film. So we have traditional CG animation. We have 2D animation. We uh, bring the, um, the flip books that they have, the flipperamas from the, uh, the, the, the books into the movie. And then we have um, actual sock, real sock puppets. So I think we ta have taken some of that uh, irreverent nature of the books and actually brought it into the film. And I think the fans will really appreciate that. You clearly get when you read the books that they're written by George and Harold. And I think we've tried to bring that into the movie. And so whether that is they break the fourth wall or they, uh, they show the flipperama scenes. I think we really tried to make sure that we're telling the story from their perspective. One of the things that we wanted to do with this movie was actually have adults playing the kid roles, which was a pretty bold choice to make. I think um, people typically would expect it to be voiced by, you know, kids within that age range. And I think we made that choice just because we thought that the, um, the actors that we picked, Kevin and Thomas, would be able to bring so much more to the role than you know a younger kid would. And um, I think it's really succeeded. Across all the main casting that we have, we chose comedians. And people who are used to either being on stage, improvising, you know, have come from that type of background. And I thought that was, um, that's really worked well for us because in all the recording sessions that we've had, they've basically used the script as a guide and being able to kind of really ad-lib, go off the script, uh, play with what we have, that really gives the film this kind of um, looseness, I feel, and has added so much comedy to the movie. One of the things I really love about the film is the celebration of creativity, and um, clearly we see that George and Harold's true love is creating these comic books. And we actually see that they've created many comic books, and Captain Underpants only being one of them. And I think what that shows is that, um, and, and they're in this environment which kind of fights against creativity. So just seeing how much they enjoy their work, how brilliant their work is, I think it's inspiring to kids. Clearly we have two kids fighting against authority, and the authority in the school is Mr. Krupp, and they're not accepting it. They realize that, this is not fun, this is not great, this is not how school should be. And so they take it upon themselves to kind of get under his skin and to kind of cr uh, create these moments which all the other students can enjoy and that will kind of undermine Mr. Krupp and his authority. One of the things that sets this film apart from other animated movies I think is the differing styles that we actually go into, uh, whether it's the CG, whether it's the seeing the comic books come alive, whether it's the moment we see the brains talking to each other, the flipper armor and the sock puppet. I think those elements are unusual in a uh, feature length animated movie. So I think it's great to get all these different types of animation within one movie. Poopy Pants is a really great villain. He's super fun, uh, voiced by Nick Kroll, who does an amazing job of uh, 
Um, I love his accent. You know, he comes from this uh, New Switzerland made up country. And I totally buy that's the accent of people from New Switzerland. So I think he's a really fun villain. And I think a lot of people are going to really dig him.